time to start a new discussion on a topic that until now has only been addressed or looked at by conspiracy nuts and phony religious scientists. You men, you are not really that different from us, and now it's time for you all to admit it. The differences between men and women have been demoted to cosmetic, not because of some scientific breakthrough, but merely because technology has eliminated the need for them. Thanks to embryology, we have learned that everyone is the same in the womb up to a specific point in development. The genitals are exactly the same. And often, they just say everyone is female during that time. The genitalia all starts off in the female configuration, and the chromosome causes the shift from female to male. The same parts are all there, they just move position, and some of the composition changes. After development, each part of each set of reproductive systems can still clearly be matched up to the other visually. This means that all the parts are there for one and the other, just serving different functions, a typical biological phenomenon. As we trace through evolutionary lines, we see that many of the traits through the species are like this, just other traits performing different functions. Though that is a gross oversimplification of the process, it's all that is needed to see why the genitalia are like this in humans. All other differences are caused entirely by hormones. The level of hormones determines how the body develops. The strange thing is that we have also learned that the hormone variations between the two genders are more varied. This means there are a lot of men with wide hips and lots of women with facial hair, for example. Even other traits once thought exclusive to one hormone or the other are now showing up with regularity with other hormone balances. This can be blamed on having been unaffected by natural selection for so long that the genetic changes no longer hinge on survival and were selected based entirely on attractions. The reason this would be a valid claim is that many women are attracted to less masculine men and many men are attracted to less feminine women. Thus, the genetic codes that counter the original survival-based traits are becoming more frequent. The only excuse to treat women differently in any situation is prejudice and stereotypes. That does not mean men should stop courting, and this is what bothers me about some feminists. On the contrary, it means you should court what you like, not what society tells you is attractive. Society is wrong, again, in judging people. Another point that should be made is that transgender people need to stop being discriminated against in the manner that bothers me the most how well they pass. The few that actually have a difficult time with this are not as strange in appearance as you seem to think. There are many women who look like men so much that they often just go with it, and even many men who look so much like women that they put on shows for people because of it. In reality, you can't say you can tell just by appearance. Oh, and I do know of the brain difference observed in many cases. However, the evidence suggests that this is either the cause of sexual differences and gender dysfunctions, in which case you are born with these, or that they are affected by hormone levels, though that does not explain the cases of the homosexual men. Link to more information is in the description. The more we learn, the more we realize our unique personalities are the only real differences.